Hello grade 12s. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Velilene Nkosi. In this lesson, we are looking at women responding to environment. So we will be focusing on the reflex act and the reflex action. So here I have the examination guideline. This is the guideline for life sciences grade 12. We are on responding to environment in human. And we will be looking at the simpler reflex act and the disorders of the central nervous system and receptors. So this is the content of this video. So I will explain everything that is on the examination guideline. So without wasting more time, let's get to it. First of all, let me start with some definitions and uh, reflex action. So the reflex action is the involuntary and automatic response to a stimulus in your environment. It's a quick built-in reaction that doesn't involve conscious thought. So uh, what this actually mean here, say the reflex action, it just takes place without involving our brain. So our body just automatically take the action without involving the brain. So this is the definition of the reflex action. And then the next definition is the reflex arc. So the reflex arc is the is the specific neutral pathway that makes a reflex action possible. So reflex arc is the pathway. So uh, let's look at this mouse. So this pathway here. So this pathway, it's a reflex arc. So reflex arc, it's it make reflex action possible. So the reflex action moves around this line. So uh, there is some action that is taking place. So it happens on the, the reflex arc. So now let's go to the reflex arc. I will label all this part here. This is the spinal cord. And now you must be able to label this part here. So first of all, I will start with the receptors. So receptors, it could be eyes, could be skin, could be ears, could be anything like taste is something that take taste so these are the receptors and the functions of the receptors is to detect stimulus so receptors detect stimulus and then it convert stimulus into the impulse so because when we are working with neurons we need impulse so receptors detect the stimulus and then convert this stimulus into the impulse and then the next part we are looking for it's the sensory neuron. So sensory neuron it's a neuron that transmit impulse. So function of a sensory neuron it carries signal from the receptor to the spinal cord. So as the receptor here detect the stimulus and then this receptor is connected to the sensory neuron. So then sensory neuron will carry this information until it reaches the spinal cord. So this information will travel in this line. So this is the sensory neuron. And then the next neuron that we are explaining is the interneuron. So the interneuron is inside the spinal cord. So function of the interneuron is to connect sensory neuron and motor neuron. So interneuron transmits signal between sensory and the motor neuron. So here is the sensory and then the motor neuron started here. So this is the interneuron. And another name for interneuron is connector neuron. It's inside the spinal cord. So another part is the motor neuron. So this is the motor neuron. Motor neuron, the function of the motor neuron is carries signal from the spinal cord to the effect. So motor neuron takes signal away from the spinal cord. So this is the and the difference between sensory and the motor. Sensory takes information to the spinal cord and then motor neuron takes this signal away from the spinal cord. Then uh, the next part is the effect. So the effect is the last part, signal destination. So the function of the function of the effector 
is to produce a response. So after the reflex action has taken place, so this effector will take action. So whatever the action that it needs to be happen, it will produce by the effect. So another thing that we must know, we must know dorsal side and ventral side. So when we talk about dorsal side, we talk about at the back. So the back side is called the dorsal side and then it's where the sensory neuron is entering the spinal cord. And then the ventral side or the ventral root, it's where the motor neuron is exceeding the spinal cord. So you must know the difference between dorsal and the ventral. Dorsal is at the back, ventral is at the at front. So this is the difference. So next up is the reflex action. So like here, I make an example of a leg. So someone is stepping on a thorn. So as their feet touches the thorn, then the thorn start to prick them. And then as they prick, the receptor will convert this pain into stimulus. So this pain will travel until the spinal cord, then the spinal cord will react and then respond to the muscle. Then this muscle will lift up the leg without involving the brain. So remember, reflex action does not involve the brain. It happened, our body just take this decision on its own. And then what happened after the body has taken the action, we lift up the leg without involving the brain. So if you didn't see, look, uh, focus on the leg. So if you step and then you lift up again. So here you can see lift up again so this is the how their reflex action is functioning so you will you will lift your leg without involving the brain then another examples it's a synapse so a synapse is a functional connection between the axon of one neuron and the dendrites of another neuron so synapse it's where two neurons are connecting so you need to know that the importance of the synapse. So a synapse, the significance of a synapse, it ensure that impulse move in the same direction. So if you can see this dendrite, it has some receptors. So these receptors accept neurotransmitters, while this axon does not have the receptors. That is mean the the this trans neurotransmitter will never move from the dendrite to the axon. They will only move from the axon to dendrite. So this synapse makes sure that the, trans, the, the impulse move in the same direction. And then it prevents continuous stimulation of the neuron. So as the transmitter has left the neuron, they will never move back again. So there won't be any stimulation of the neuron. So these are the functions of the synapse. This is one neuron, which is the axon. So this neuron is continued this way. And then this is another neuron, which continues this way. And then the direction, this is the direction. They only move in this direction. So these are the significance of synapse. And then another thing that must be known is there are the disorders. So the disorders of the central nervous system. We have Alzheimer disease and then we have multiple sclerosis. So I will explain these two disorders. And uh, with the Alzheimer disease, it occurs when the nerve tissue within the brain of a person appear to be destroyed. So if it happens that tissues, cells of the brain are destroyed, then this condition is called Alzheimer disease. So it usually occur in older people or older person. So how do we see someone someone with Alzheimer's disease? So the symptoms of someone with Alzheimer disease, it's a memory loss. So they forget very easily and then confusion, they are very confused. So this is the symptoms of someone with Alzheimer disease. And then the next up is the multiple sclerosis. So the multiple sclerosis occurs when the body immune system attack, mainly sheath 
that covering neuron. So you remember in the structure of a neuron, we talked about myelin sheath. So if our body immune system attacked the myelin sheath, then this condition is multiple sclerosis because this will prevent the neuron from functioning properly. Since the myelin sheath is covering the neuron, so if it gets attacked, then the neuron will not function properly. And then how do we see someone with this condition? So someone with this condition, uh, you find them, they lost speech and they lost vision, difficulty walking, and then they complain about pain and they feel fatigue all the time. So these are the symptoms of someone with multiple sclerosis. So these are all the information that I would like to provide for this video. So if you have watched it to this far, thank you very much. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. So if you are studying, say good luck with your studies. Thank you very much. God bless you.